Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing penicillin antibiotics. Okay, so in the previous video what we discussed was the core penicillin structure which all penicillin antibiotics uh, possess, uh, and the mechanism by which all penicillin antibiotics actually achieve their bactericidal effect on bacterial species which have a peptidoglycan cell wall. Okay, in this video what I want to turn my attention to is looking at the different examples of penicillin antibiotics. Okay, so we've discussed that penicillin is not just one antibiotic, it's an entire class of antibiotics, and there are loads of different penicillin antibiotics. Now, the penicillin antibiotics are usually classified into four separate uh, categories, namely the original penicillins, the beta-lactamase resistant penicillins, the broad spectrum penicillins, and the extended spectrum penicillins. And what I now want to do is go through each of these categories, give you examples of penicillin antibiotics that are in each of the classes, uh, and then um, talk about the properties of these different drugs. Okay, so we will begin then with the original penicillins, which is the logical place to begin. And when I'm showing you the original penicillins, what I'd like to do is actually show you the R group that each of those drugs has. So if I just get back up the picture of the core penicillin structure here, this portion is the same in all of the penicillin antibiotics. And remember, the bit that varies is just this R group here, the ACR side chain. So what I'd like to do just to make sure that this concept is completely clear is actually show you the R groups uh, for the two original penicillins. I'm not going to show you the R groups for every single one of the different penicillin antibiotics that we go through now, but I would just like to do it for two, really to um, make the concept absolutely clear that all of the different examples of penicillin antibiotics are going to have a different uh, chemical structure in that R position. Okay, so let's begin then with the original penicillins, which I'll just call the originals here. Okay, so there are two originals. Uh, they are called penicillin G and penicillin V. Okay, and they've got other names as well, and the other names uh, help you understand what the R group is. They describe the R group of the, uh, each of these drugs. Okay, so the originals are called penicillin G and also penicillin V. Okay, now what I'd want to do now is give you the other name uh, for each of these drugs, and then I want to show you the R group that each of them has in that R position. Okay, so penicillin G, the other name for penicillin G is benzyl penicillin, and as I say, this is describing the R group. So the R group of penicillin G, or benzyl penicillin, is going to be a benzene ring with a methylene group then attaching it to the uh, carboxylic acid carbon. So if I just get back up the core structure of penicillin here. So uh, remember we have this amide link here, and now uh, the R group that I'm about to draw will be attached. I'll show you very uh, clearly which carbon it is that's going to be attached to the uh, carbonyl group here of the amide link. Okay, right, so the R group of benzyl penicillin then, it looks like this. So of course you're going to have a benzene ring, which I'll just draw as a hexagon with a, a circle to represent the delocalized ring of electrons in it. And then we're going to have a methylene group like so. And this is then the free bond which will be bound to that uh, carbonyl group of the amide link on the core penicillin structure. So there is the structure of benzyl penicillin, also called penicillin G, one of the original penicillins. Okay, now penicillin V. Penicillin V, its other name is phenoxymethyl penicillin. Okay, and again, this is describing the R group that we're actually going to have coming off the core penicillin structure. Okay, so in the case of penicillin V, then, we're going to have, again, a benzene ring, that's the fan bit. Then we're going to have it attached to an oxygen atom, and then a methylene group. So very similar to benzyl penicillin, just a slight variation. So here is the fan for the benzene ring. Then we're going to have the oxygen for the oxy, so this is phenoxy. And then we're going to have a methylene group for the methyl. And then again, that will be the free bond attaching uh, to the carbon of the carbonyl group of the amide link uh, at the end of that penicillin core nucleus structure. 
Okay, so those then are the R groups of benzyl penicillin, also called penicillin G, and phenoxymethyl penicillin, also known as penicillin V, the two original penicillins. Now, these two drugs are still used. Penicillin G, something that you should know about it is that it has to be given by intravenous injection. Okay, it's oral bioavailability is very, very poor, so if you take it orally, the amount of it that will actually end up going from the gastrointestinal tract into the bloodstream is very small. We say that it's oral bioavailability, the amount of it that will actually get into the bloodstream if you take it orally is very poor, and for that reason it has to be given intravenously, and clearly that will limit its use. Penicillin V, meanwhile, can be given orally, okay, it has a better bioavailability than penicillin G, so it can be given per os orally, so PO is just um, a um, abbreviation for orally, okay, it's the Latin per os for the mouth. Okay, so, uh, penicillin G and penicillin V, they are still used, as I say. Now, the other limitation of these drugs is that they are very, very good against gram-positive bacteria, uh, bacterial species, so bacterial species that have that very thick cell wall, but not the outer cell membrane, but they're less good, they have a limited efficacy against gram-negative bacteria, uh, so um, bacteria which have the smaller cell wall, but then have that additional cell membrane, these two are not so good against those gram-negative bacteria, and indeed, one of the motivations for the later some of the other categories of penicillin, uh, so some of the later penicillins to be developed, is to try and make the drug better, or try and make the penicillins better at actually attacking gram-negative bacterial species. Okay, however, before we actually talk about trying to make penicillin molecules better at actually killing gram-negative bacteria, which is the topic of broad-spectrum and extended-spectrum penicillins, I want to firstly point out and talk about beta-lactamase resistance to penicillin. Okay, so when we started using the classical penicillins, penicillin G and penicillin V, of course, it was a medical revolution. We could now cure bacterial infections that would have previously killed people. Okay, so it was fantastic, but of course what began to occur very, very quickly is that the bacterial population began to evolve. You, begun to, you began to see uh, bacterial populations that were resistant to the penicillin G molecules and the penicillin V molecules. Okay, and this is classical Darwinian selection. If you uh, expose a huge population of bacteria to a selection pressure, such as a molecule that is going to kill most of the bacteria, then because in the population there will be variation amongst the bacteria, eventually if you keep doing this time after time again, and of course once word got out about how brilliant penicillins were, they were used all over the world, eventually somewhere, somewhere, uh, well someone somewhere will use penicillin against a population of bacteria which just so happens to have a, a bacterial cell in it that has an individual variation property that means that it can survive the insult. Some property, and we'll go over a, an example of the property, that means that it isn't going to be killed by the penicillin molecule, and of course all of its mates will be killed by the penicillin. And now it will have all of the resources to itself, it will have plenty of nutrients and food. Okay, so now what it will do is it will divide and divide and divide and repopulate uh, the entire bacterial population because it's got all the resources to itself. And then what will happen is you'll end up therefore with a bacterial population that completely consists of um, cells that are derived from this one was resistant and therefore they're all resistant to penicillins. So what ends up happening is the bacterial population has therefore evolved, it's evolved to now have this um, property that it's resistant to penicillins. Okay, so it's a classical Darwinian selection process leading to the evolution of the population in bacteria. So, what was one of the key mechanisms by which bacterial uh, cells could actually end up being resistant to penicillin molecules? Well, if the bacterial cell had a very high expression level of enzymes that could break down penicillin molecules, then it would be immune to the effects of penicillin because at uh, the instant the penicillin molecules get into it, 
they'll be broken down by these enzymes that it expresses at a very high level. And such enzymes which can break down penicillin molecules uh, are called beta-lactamases. Okay, so one of the mechanisms by which certain bacteria have become resistant to penicillin is because they have far too high expression of beta-lactamase enzymes which can break down penicillin molecules. Now let me just explain how beta-lactamases will break down penicillin molecules. So we have discussed that in all penicillin molecules you are going to have a beta-lactam ring. So remember this is this four-membered ring where one of the members is nitrogen, the other three members are carbon atoms, and the carbon next to the nitrogen atom has a double bond to an oxygen atom here. Okay, so this is a beta-lactam ring. Now, this ring is absolutely essential for the function of the penicillin antibiotic. It's key for the penicillin antibiotic to be able to bind to the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme and actually inhibit it. So if this ring is not intact, if this ring has been broken down, and we'll see exactly how it can be broken down, hydrolyzed in a moment, um, then the penicillin antibiotic becomes useless, it can no longer perform its role. And indeed, beta-lactamases are going to hydrolyze this bond here between this carbon and this nitrogen. This, uh, in case you haven't realized, is an amide bond. We've got a carboxylic acid group effectively here bound to an amino group to form an amide bond. So it can now be hydrolyzed, and indeed that's what beta-lactamases are going to do. So what you'll now end up with is you'll bring in water, so I'll just bring in a water molecule here. Okay, the nitrogen will end up with a hydrogen attached to it, and this carbon will have its uh, hydroxyl group restored. So what you're effectively doing, so that you can understand this, this isn't an e electronic mechanism, this is just for understanding purposes. You're breaking this bond, imagine sending an electron back to this carbon and an electron back to this nitrogen. Break one of the bonds in water, send an electron back to the oxygen and an electron back to the hydrogen. Now bind this hydrogen with its free electron to this nitrogen with its free electron to form this bond, and bind this oxygen with its free electron to this carbon with its free electron to form this bond here. And then you've hydrolyzed the beta-lactam ring. So this is what beta-lactamase enzymes can do to uh, beta-lactam rings in penicillin molecules. And as soon as this has happened to a penicillin molecule, it's no longer functional. It will not be able to bind to and inhibit the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme anymore. So, if you find a bacterial cell, which eventually will happen because there's so many bacteria uh, in the world and we used penicillin against so many of them, okay, eventually we'll end up using it against the bacterial population which has a bacterial cell in it that has far too high expression of these beta-lactamase enzymes. And this might have previously been useless to that bacterial cell, but now suddenly it's been placed in a selection pressure where this actually becomes extremely useful to it. It's been exposed to penicillin antibiotics and it it alone can now survive because as soon as the penicillin molecules come anywhere close to it, it they meet a beta-lactamase enzyme which then um, will break it down and therefore it won't get exposed to the actual penicillin antibiotic. Penicillin won't be able to break down, um, well, sorry, won't be able to inhibit its peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzymes and therefore it will maintain its cell wall. It will then uh, as I say, have all of the resources to itself because all of its surroundings, uh, well, all of its surrounding bacterial cells have died, uh, and therefore it will divide and divide and divide and repopulate. Okay, and therefore you'll end up with now a population that are all resistant to penicillin. Okay, so this was a problem. When we started using penicillins commonly, uh, we started to get populations of bacteria emerging that were resistant to penicillin and it was becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger problem. Okay, so what we now do is we invent the next category of penicillins. We modify the penicillin molecules to try and make them uh, so that they will be resistant to beta-lactamases. Because remember, these beta-lactamases, they're an enzyme. They have to, their substrate is the penicillin antibiotic molecules. If we could modify the R group of the penicillin molecule so that now the penicillin molecule cannot fit into the beta-lactamases, then surely we'd have a beta-lactamase-resistant penicillins. So this is now the motivation for the next category of penicillin antibiotics, the beta lactamase resistant penicillins, and I'll move this up in just a moment. 
Okay, so the beta max maze resistant penicillin. So what we did is we modified the R group uh, on the penicillin antibiotic molecules uh, to try and make it so that they would no longer fit into the beta max maze antibiotics and therefore they wouldn't be broke. So they would no longer fit into the beta max maze uh, enzymes and therefore they would no longer be substrates for those beta max maze enzymes and they would still work against these bacterial populations which have now evolved and have got very high expression levels of beta max maze enzymes. Okay, so what examples then am I going to give you of penicillin antibiotics that were created to be beta lactamase resistant? Well, I'm just going to give you two. Two major examples are flucloxacillin, which is very commonly used in um, medical practice, uh, and also another one that's of note is methicillin. So flucloxacillin and methicillin are examples of penicillin antibiotics that we specifically created so that their R group would hopefully mean that they were no longer substrates for the beta lactamase enzymes and therefore they would still work against these bacterial populations which have got very high expression levels of beta lactamase enzymes. Okay, so flucloxacillin and methicillin. So they do work, they are the beta lactamase resistant penicillins. Okay, another approach then to trying to cope with the problem of beta lactamase um, enzymes causing resistant to penis resistance to penicillin molecules in bacterial species is to create specific molecules that we could give with the penicillin antibiotic which would inhibit the beta lactamase enzyme. Uh, okay, so these are known as beta lactamase inhibitors. So this is another strategy for dealing with the problem of bacteria acquiring resistance to penicillin by having high expression level of these beta lactamase enzymes. We could give the penicillin drug with another drug that just inhibits the beta lactamase enzyme and therefore the beta lactamase enzymes will be inhibited by this drug and now the penicillin won't be broken down by the beta lactamase and will still inhibit the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme and still kill the bacterial even though they have very high levels of beta lactamase. So what examples of beta lactamase inhibitors can I give you? Uh, well, notable examples are clavulonic acid. It's an example of a beta lactamase inhibitor and it's often given in combination with penicillin antibiotics, and I'll mention an example of that later on. And another one is called tazobactam. Again, uh, it's often given in combination with penicillin antibiotics to prevent them being broken down by the beta lactamase enzymes. Uh, and again, I'll give you an example of that later on. Okay, so those are beta lactamase inhibitors uh, which can block the activity of these beta lactamase enzymes. So this is how uh, we dealt with the problem of bacterial species acquiring resistance to penicillin via upregulating or ending up with far too high expression of beta lactamase enzymes which could break down the penicillin molecules. I think we'll have a break here and then in the next video what we'll talk about is a new emerging problem uh, with penicillin resistance. Uh, the example, one of the key examples being MRSA. And then what we'll do is talk about the broad spectrum penicillins and the extended spectrum penicillins.